Hello everyone and welcome to Sutton's Days. Today I'm going to share a story that a longtime Dazer has shared with us and then we're going to talk about different solutions so that maybe you can prevent this from happening to you. Now admittedly this was a freak thing and I, I, I would rather deal with spiders all day long than mice or rodents. I, I don't care for them. They make my skin crawl. They are disease carrying, horrible little creatures, okay? And they are the bane of your existence when you live in a rural environment and you have animals, livestock. Um, but this story takes it to an apocalyptic level. It is, it's just crazy. So first, I would like to thank Janine for sharing her story and for allowing me to share it with all of you. So I'm going to read her post in our Facebook group where she shared this, and then we're going to talk about some ways to hopefully prevent it moving forward. There's, there's a lot here. There's a lot here. Okay. Ooh, shake it off. Okay. So Janine says, I'm ready to share my troubles and hopes it helps just one person in some way. A year ago, the community near mine purchased land to put in a high school at the border of my community. That is a whole can of UGG, but not the story. The high school is about six, five to ten acre parcels away from ours. Uh, anyway, blasting for the roads and underground structures began and my life of regular rural happiness ended. First wave was mice by the thousands. Horrible, but every possible mouse destruction was employed and we breathed a sigh of relief and moved on. Then the rats by thousands literally came. It was Amityville of the rats. At night, the ground, fences, coops, home, travel trailer were covered. A nightmare of rodents smaller than any traps money could buy. Smarter than any traps money could buy, sorry. Um, I bought them all, including a $260 perfect trap. They even ate holes in my sleeping chickens, went after our small dogs, and bit our pigs on their face and legs. To move on, we finally won, and the rats are gone. Yeah. Two vehicles with a total of $25,000 in damage and more repairs to the trailer, coops, and home to go. But the worst is my precious, my treasures of my working pantry and food stores. All items in plastic, boxes, non-glass are all gone. They ate holes in all of the water bottles, mustard, ketchup, syrup, oil, etc., all plastic containers. They left me the mustard after opening them, though. Didn't suit their tastes. <sighs> so, my word to share is to know that sometimes you think you are good to go, and then someone whispers on your house of house-made cards, um, and I never imagined water bottles. I never imagined a storm of rodents of such magnitude either. Life happens. Protect your precious better than I did. Think outside the box. Much love to all. Giving thanks to God for storms survived and knowledge gained. I am grateful to Janine for sharing this story because this is this is one of those things that, you know, yes, I prepare for mice. I store my food accordingly. Uh, with the knowledge that I live in a rural environment and that mice happen. It's just one of those things that happen. And that's why we have Shadow. You know, well, that's not why we have Shadow, but that's his job since he's here. And um, he's done a very good job, and I have been remarkably fortunate on the mouse stance. But having something like that, and to me, thousands of rats, thousands of mice, that to me is apocalyptic level okay because the only thing that I would want to do at that point is set everything on fire okay I and that's not an option that is not an option and thankfully it wasn't an option for Janine either but when you think about them going after the livestock the dogs the live taking bites out of live animals you know and then what they did to her pantry that wasn't stored in things other than plastic so Normally, when we do, you know, different videos here and there, you'll see me vacuum sealing different items. And this is one of the reasons that I do. Because if rodents can smell it, they will go after it. But here we have a bunch of different information for you to um, help you and keep your pantry safe. Because 
your pantry is not safe with these things. They, oh, they're just horrible little creatures. Okay, so a lot of people will do the, the least expensive way of trying to repel rodents, okay? So what smells do mice dislike? Well, they, they don't like humans, believe it or not. Um, they can use their sense of smell to sniff out our food and make themselves right at home. So ammonia, they believe, is a very good deterrent for mice. Mothballs, chili oil or powder, peppermint oil, Terminix. Um, some people say that Irish Spring soap is a deterrent. I have yet to find any of these effective. None of these, in my experience, including Irish Spring, have been effective. Um, I could, I could fill my barn <clears throat> with Irish Spring, and the mice would sit in the door laughing at me while they're chewing on it. So maybe it's depending on where you're at. I don't know, but here they're like, "Yeah, Irish Spring, thanks, lady, we're out." You know. Um, one of the things that uh, a subscriber, she used to come to the chats all the time. I don't think I've seen her in a while. She suggested um, putting beer in a low dish in the barn. Don't do this in your house, okay? Um, but in the barn, put a, a shallow dish with some beer. So I did like a coffee canister. I did the lid, you know, and I put some beer in it. And the mice are attracted to the beer and they will go and they will drink it. It's the yeast. They're really attracted to the yeast. They'll go and they'll drink it. Well, mice can't fart. That's, yeah, that's my, my wild news for the day. Mice can't fart. So um, they will walk away from it and they will explode. It works. It really, really does. Okay. But after about a month or two, they got smart. They really did. So they learn, they adapt. And so you have to learn and adapt with them. Um, mice can chew through everything. Seriously. So mice can chew through paper, obviously. They can chew through plastic, as Janine found out. They can even chew through mylar bags. Mylar bags um, are, oh gosh, mylar bags are a great way to store your food, okay? And theoretically, there is no smell from any of the food that's in it to attract anything. But Mice can still chew through it because mylar is basically plastic with aluminum woven into it. Um, so while it may take them longer, um, they will, they can, they can, but they'd have to be really motivated to do it, you know? So just putting your, your stash in mylar bags is not enough. You have then have to take those mylar bags and place them into something like buckets or cans or that kind of thing. So, um, Mylar bags are not the be-all end-all, but they're definitely a good step. And Mylar, in my opinion, is more for freshness, for keeping the food stable, um, for long-term storage. But for that extra layer of protection, you definitely want to take those Mylar bags and put them in something. Because they can they can become punctured, they can, you know, and mice can chew through them, right? So mice are determined. They can... Stainless steel, so like, or, or stainless, you know, the wool, the, the, yeah, I know what I mean. Anyway, the stainless steel things like the wool pads. Thank you. Um, a lot of people say, okay, you can put those in different places and those actually won't stop them, but it will slow them down. And what it is, is that they don't like the feel of it on their nose. It, it's sharp to them on their nose. So it slows them down. But if they're determined, they will go through it. It's, it's just the way that it is now those layers are very helpful. You know, the mylar in the bucket or the mylar in uh, one of those steel gas, or gas cans, trash cans, right? Um, but those steel trash cans don't really stack well on top of each other. So uh, you, you, have to, you have to think about some of the different ways to store stuff. Now, if you're dealing, dealing with like a 50 pound bag of something and you put it in a mylar and then you store it in a trash can, you know, the steel trash cans, then that's great. Nothing's getting in there. We steal, we store our, our feed in trash cans in the barn. So it works. Nothing gets into them unless you leave that lid up. And then when you go open it in the morning, you will find company staring back up at you. It's the way that it works. Metal and glass are your best deterrents for keeping rodents or pests, period, 
out of your prepares, your prepared food, okay? Um, out of your beans, out of your rice, out of your all, everything. Keep things in glass or metal to make sure that they are safe. Nothing will permeate those. You can layer up, like I said, using mylar inside of buckets, but you don't want really cheap buckets. You want a good, thick plastic. I have seen squirrels chew through those big Rubbermaid garbage cans, right? They chewed a great big hole in it. So when they're motivated, they will get in there. So the idea is to keep them from smelling the food, knowing that it's there, and then attempting to get into it. But in your pantry, vacuum sealing in glass jars, putting in mylar bags, removing the things that are in boxes or bags and putting them into glass or a very thick plastic are very helpful. Now these are totes that I get from Sam's Club. You can get them from different places. And I really like them because they're a heavy duty or uh, heavier duty tote, um, but the lids go onto them so that there's no access around the lid. Now, most of the Sterilite or Rubbermaid totes that I've run across, uh, one, are a very thin plastic, okay, and two, have access holes sometimes where things can get into them. So it's not really a great option, but a tote like this, number one, it keeps it dark, so that's good. Um, but a tote like this is set up so that it does not allow access from larger things like mice now or, or rats. And they would, they would have to be highly motivated and smell. They would have to be able to smell that food in that tote. So again, it's a secondary layer around your preps to make sure that nothing gets into them. Okay. Um, hardware cloth. It's another option, but mice can get through hardware cloth, right? Rats can gain entry through any opening greater than a half an inch, 1.3 centimeters across. And mice through an opening anything larger than a quarter of an inch. That's very small. Let's say that you're already dealing with this problem. So how can you get rid of rats or mice permanently, right? Look for the signs of entry. Figure out where they're coming in. And this can take a little while. I mean, I found out why my cat was staring at the wall in my kitchen, you know, for a couple of years. Because we were dealing with mice. And it was normally, you know, in the fall. They're getting in before the cold hits. And we would deal with a couple, one, two, three tops. But um, one year, I'm like, what, where are they coming from? This is driving me crazy. So we changed all the rubber on the bottom of the doors. You know, we made sure everything stayed closed. We checked everything before we brought it in the house. It ends up that they had gotten from the outside under the siding into the wall and then they would actually gain entrance from up there dogs dogs what are you gonna do from where the molding was they would be able to get through there but and, that, and we found that part out after we took the molding off during the remodel but the cat would hear them in the wall and i'm like why is the cat staring at the wall like this this makes no sense <clears throat> so you have to really stop and look and pay attention to where they might be coming in you want to try to seal and secure all entry points. Do everything that you can. When we redid the side of the house, we figured out what was going on. We figured out what was going on in the kitchen. And knock on wood, okay, we haven't had a problem since in the house. So that's good. One mouse in two, two and a half years, something like that, um, that we've dealt with. And I think it came through a door, you know. So you have to, it takes a little bit. It's going to take some work. You want to eliminate all food sources. So if you notice them in the house, you want to be paying attention and you want to get that food up, out, sealed, whatever. You want to make sure that they cannot access any of that food because they will find it, they will eat it, they will move in, and then they will bring all of their cousins with them, okay? Um, any, remove any rat-friendly environments for, you know, what that's worth. Don't make them comfortable. Um, install multiple traps because I swear they do get smarter. They really do get smarter, okay? And I am not much like that, that whole beer yeast thing, right? The problem with that in the house is that they will drink it, they will go off someplace and die. And how many of you have had a, a rodent get into your heat duct? I did at my office once. It was awful for 30 days. For 30 days in the dead of winter, I had my window open in my office because we couldn't get to it and it was it was horrible so i will put a link to those totes down below so that you can check those out 
I've also heard baking soda works because baking soda, like the yeast, um, is something that they they can't tolerate, okay? But they don't have a problem with Irish Spring. They really, really don't. Remember to package your food defensively. Um, metal containers, glass bottles, heavy plastic containers with very tight-fitting, resistant lids, okay? Um, paper boxes, plastic bags, cellophane packages, or packages that do not close thoroughly are easily accessible to rodents. It's just the way that it is. Sacks of flour, bags of grain, they all need a better barrier. You need that, that metal, that glass, that heavy plastic, heavy plastic, okay, to keep them from getting in there. It's super important. And it's not just food. One of my biggest fears, and the reason from pantry tours you guys have seen, my toilet paper stash is all on the top shelf, is because I don't want them nesting in there. If they get into the pantry, one of my biggest fears is pulling out one of those packages and having a big old mouse nest in there, okay? That stuff all needs to come up so that you can make sure that nothing is getting in there. But don't kid yourself, they climb. They climb very well. They're very proficient at it. So being on task, being aware of what's happening around your house, making sure that you're surveying everything, moving things, checking things out, um, is really important to make sure that you're on top of your game and that you don't lose all of your preps. Now, the freak accident that happened, accident, the freak incident that happened to Janine, I, ca I can't imagine for the life of me. And uh, I know that I would be having an absolute fit on somebody because that's a lot of loss. And you're kind of, you're kind of torn at that point, you know? Do I get the monetary replacement for it from my insurance company? Um, or do I not let them know what I had? Because not everybody needs to know about your preps, right? In order to be truly safe with your preps, it needs to be stored correctly. And tomorrow can catch up with you really quick if you don't have time to do it today. So I hope that you learn I thank Janine for sharing her story and let's all get out there and make our pantries and our preps as safe as possible. If you have any suggestions, feel free to throw them in the comments section down below. Until next time, be safe.